the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Or whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for... The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, a nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital. Where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Will that be all, Dr. Gillespie? Did you want to take a blood sample? No, no, no. That's all as far as I'm concerned, Miss Werner. Any further examination, Jimmy? No, I think we can handle the rest of it easier at the hospital. Mrs. Brady, you understand you're to be there at 9 o'clock in the morning for x-rays. Uh, yes, Dr. Gildare, 9 o'clock. Tell me something, Dr. Gillespie. Is it real bad? Well, now... But I... Mrs. Brady, you're expecting a diagnosis before we've even completed our examination. I feel so funny. Well, we'll make some x-rays in the morning, maybe some other tests, and, and then we'll know a lot more about it. It's been bothering me off and on for a year now, but it got worse about four months ago. Really? But this is the first time you've been to the clinic? Well... I went to see Dr. Conlon for a while. Conlon? I don't know any Dr. Conlon, Jimmy. Oh, he's got a real nice office in the Brunswick building. Uh -huh. You know, he's the one that advertises all the time. He has that machine, whatever it's called. Machine? Oh, you remember, Dr. Gillespie. I showed you one of his ads a few weeks ago. He uses uh, what I think he calls an electroradonic diagnostoscope. Oh, yeah, that one. Mm. Yeah. And, and what did Dr. Conlon say was wrong with you, Mrs. Brady? Well, it, it's real complicated, Dr. Gillespie. It's something about the electricity. It's in my joints and my liver when it ought to be out in my fingertips. Oh, to be sure, to be sure, yeah. The machine doesn't seem to help me much, but he said if I'd keep on, it'd just happen overnight. That's how it works. Just like magic, huh? He had all kinds of letters from people he's cured. I went to him regular until I couldn't afford it anymore. By the tarnation. Jimmy, I... Yeah, I know. Uh, you can go now if you like, Mrs. Brady. All right, Dr. Kildare. We'll see you in the morning at the hospital. Thank you, Dr. Gillespie. Goodbye, now. Goodbye, Mrs. Brady. Ah, tarnation. I know a nurse is not supposed to offer a diagnosis, but, well, it was pretty obvious, wasn't it? Not much doubt about it, Miss Werner. Doesn't have a chance in a thousand. Oh, confounded, Jimmy. Cancer can be cured. Why don't they come to us in the beginning? In this case, you know why she didn't. Dr. Conlon and his electroradonic diagnostoscope. Uh, electricity in her joints. Oh, she went to him until her savings ran out. Uh, great. And she's not the only victim. I've seen others come into this clinic before, victims either of him or a hundred other fakes just like him. Dr. Gillespie, that man ought to be stopped. He ought to be smashed. And furthermore, he's going to be stopped. Oh. I don't know how, but but I think we could do it. Oh, 
confounded Jimmy. I don't see any reason for all this falderall. Be quiet now. I'm trying to listen to your heart. Well, there's nothing wrong with my heart. Never has been. Shh, quiet now. By the John Nation, if I'd known that I was letting myself in for this, Jimmy, I would... Well, my dear Dr. G, you were right. Your heart's perfect. Ah, of course it's perfect. Diana, along with the blood pressure and pulse rate, no general valve action, excellent. Yes. Evidence of myocardial deterioration, none. Right, sir. Three complete physical examinations in one day by three different doctors. <laughs> I feel like the prize bull at the county fair. Well, in order to make this stick, you know, we've got to document it completely right from the start. Well, Bertolli and Mace are pretty good authorities, you know. They're only two of the best internists in the country. Next That's... to you, of course. Oh, well, I was going to say that. Oh, I knew you were. Well, personally, I didn't expect to find something that Dr. Mace and Dr. Batoli missed in their examination this morning. But after all, I've known you, worked beside you for years, and that gives my diagnosis a different kind of authenticity. Oh, Diana, you can file my diagnosis report along with the other two now. Yes, sir. And keep everything in the same file, x-rays, cardiogram, basal metabolism. Mm -hmm. Ah, anybody think I was going into training to fight this Dr. Conlon? <laughs> you may have to before we're through. Now, wouldn't that be something? Hmm? Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, gorgeous Gillespie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> wearing baby blue satin trunks, ballet slippers, and... and uh, good afternoon, Dr. Carew. Where? Well, Dr. Gillespie, what in heaven's name is wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with me, Carew. But someone informed me that you've been examined today by two different consultants. Are you ill? I am not. And anyway, it's none of your business. Please. <laughs> Dr. Gillespie's merely getting ready for an ordeal, Dr. Carew. An ordeal? Yes, in fact, I haven't yet told him the full extent of it. His name now is Mr. Gillis, and he's going to be my father. Your what? My father. Oh, well, now, Jimmy, isn't it several years too late for me to embark on that particular career? Oh, not at all. Why, it's never too late, Pop. <laughs> Yes, indeed, Mr. Gillis. You've certainly brought your father to the right place. We'll have him on his feet in no time at all. Well, I'm on my feet now, Dr. Conlon. Oh, yes. Uh, please have a seat. Uh, thank you. You see, Dad's been having this trouble for nearly a year, but I couldn't get him to go to a doctor. He... Well, he has the idea they're all quacks. And with good reason, Mr. Gillis. I recognized your father as a man of keen intelligence the minute he walked in here. And a successful businessman, too, I'll venture Oh, not bad, not bad. Oh, Dad's retired now. Sold his chain of grocery stores last year. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Gentlemen, you may not believe it, but the average medical doctor is a quack. You don't say. Modern civilization has progressed to inconceivable heights while medicine has stood still. Hmm. Why? Because the legit, the average doctor is blind. He refuses to make use of the greatest scientific discovery of this century. Oh, Oh, what's that? Electronics. Huh. Mr. Gillis, I presume you've heard of my electroradonic diagnostoscope? Oh, yes, yes. That, that's the part of your ad that attracted us. I, I don't know much about electricity, but it sounds fantastic. Oh, I can assure you that if some of the miracles of healing I've seen take place in this office had been performed in a time gone by, I'd have been burned at the stake. Ah, uh, the good old days. Well, Dr. Conlon, Dad's trouble seems to center around his chest with mm. pain sometimes in his left arm. Oh, no symptoms, please, Mr. Gillis. The machine takes care of all that. Oh, pain in the left arm. Uh, gentlemen, suppose we step into the electronics laboratory. Uh, this way. Well, now, that's quite an elaborate gadget. Gadget? Mr. Gillis, you are standing before one of the most complex mechanisms known to modern science. Uh, sit here, please. <laughs> it looks like the electric chair. Oh, no danger at all. The intranuclear magnetic flux is completely compensated by the spectrum balance of the... <sighs> but I suppose that's all Greek to you. Impressive, though. Now, just let me adjust these high-potential diatomic electrodes. Gee, all those dials, control knobs, tubes, coils, it's... It's amazing. Oh, believe me, every one of them has a purpose. Now, just relax, Mr. Gillis. You won't feel a thing. <laughs> Good luck, Dad. Ah, so that's it. What's it? 
The protonic balance of gamma waves indicates a strong deviation in the vicinity of the heart. You mean it's heart trouble? Precisely. Well, go on, then. Twist a couple of knobs and cure it. Oh, I'm afraid it's not that simple. The machine is only set now for diagnosis. You notice I'm recording the readings of all these dials. I'll have to spend several hours computing your health vibration factor. That's why the treatments are somewhat uh, expensive. How expensive, Dr. Conlon? Fifty dollars a piece. Fifty dollars a piece? Well, after all, Mr. Gillis, your health is an important thing. Oh, you're absolutely right, Dr. Conlon. Now, uh, how many treatments will be necessary, do you think? Well, that varies. Well, that's all, Mr. Gillis. Ten o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll start you down that happy road to joyous health. Well, that's very generous. Uh, not at all, not at all. The greatest pleasure in life, gentlemen, comes from helping to alleviate human suffering. You can go out this door. Uh, do I uh, pay you, Dr. Conlon? No, no, no. Hurry at all, Mr. Gillis. Tomorrow will be fine. Good day, gentlemen. Bye, Dr. Conlon. Thank you. By the John Nation. Of all the phony swindles, that takes the case. Yeah, probably a highly effective act, though, with somebody who doesn't know better. Ah, trouble of all things. I was hoping he'd pick that. That's why I mentioned the pain in the left arm. <laughs> by the way, Dr. Gillespie, did you by any chance notice that spot on the back of his hand? Yes, I did. And apparently you got the same idea I did. I wonder if he's used that machine on himself. Well, I don't know, Jimmy, but he certainly ought to. I tell you, gentlemen, when I heard about it, I simply sat down and blanched. I really did. I blanched. All right, Carew, we heard you. You blanched. Who told you about it? Why, Miss Park? Let's just say a little bird told me. You mean a big, long-nosed buzzard named Parker. Oh, dear. Well, even though you've heard what we're planning, Dr. Carew, I don't understand why you're so upset about it. I am more than upset, Dr. Kildare. I'm utterly prostrated ah, but... by the very idea of dragging the name of Blair Hospital into a sensational newspaper story. Why, it's unthinkable. Well, it's the best way I know of putting this Dr. Conlon out of business. Oh, sure, there are legal angles to stop him, but there are also loopholes. But when this story is printed, he can't dodge the publicity. Publicity? Oh, I shudder to think of it. And we'll get publicity, plenty of it, with three top diagnosticians in the country involved in it. Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Patoli, and Dr. Mason, with the name of Blair Hospital featured... Dr. Kildare, I absolutely forbid you to go on with this scheme. Dr. Carew, there's a Mrs. Brady upstairs in this hospital waiting to undergo surgery next week. It's very doubtful that the operation is going to help her. Four months ago, it would have. I fail to see just what Mrs. Brady has to do with it. Four months ago, Mrs. Brady was being swindled by Dr. Conlon's so-called diagnostoscope. She only came to us after it was too late. She's not the only victim, nor is Conlon the only crook. Very well, Dr. Gildare. But it's simply not our responsibility. Well, I feel it's my responsibility. Now, just a minute. Carew, shut up. Dr. Gillespie. Jimmy and I are going ahead with this, whether you like it or not. Oh? But I'll tell you what we'll do. Yes? We'll include a paragraph in the article stating that you were opposed to the idea. Oh, well, in that case... I... Oh, good heavens, no. Why, it would ruin me, I... Oh, dear. You know, there's another interesting angle in this that we haven't followed up yet. Huh. Although he doesn't know it, Conlon has a well-advanced sarcoma. Unless he's treated very soon by a legitimate doctor, he won't live a year. Right. <laughs> to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. You know something, Jimmy? What, sweetie? You're a rat. Oh, and I was hoping you wouldn't find out. 
Well, tell me, is it something specific or just a rat in general? It's very specific, and if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. Now, what could I have done? Good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Morning, Miss Burr. Morning. Mm. Jimmy? Mm. How's your heart this morning, Daddy? Well, not too bad, Sonny. <laughs> Except for a few <laughs> stray electromagno protons in the right ventricle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Our Mr. Gillis is beginning to emerge from the dark ages of medicine, that's all. <laughs> oh, that Dr. Conlon racket. Right. How's the plan working out? Mm, okay, so far. Daddy and I have another appointment with him at 10 this morning. We sat up last night until after midnight working on the newspaper release. I know. That's what I was talking about a couple of minutes ago. Well, I'd better get to work. Now, wait a minute. What, what, what do you mean? Jimmy, we had a date last night. Uh, holy mackerel, I forgot all about it. Yes, I know. See you later. Uh, uh, I never thought I'd see the day when a son of mine would treat such a beautiful girl with such a lack of consideration. Oh, do you know I forgot it completely. I... Guess I'm really in the doghouse now. Oh, I doubt that, Jimmy. I think Diana has enough understanding to put up with your little eccentricities. Eccentricities? Look who's talking. Will you? I can get away with it, you know, on the grounds of senility. I see. I'm referred to as a grand old man by these idiots around here. <laughs> Speaking of idiots. Good morning, Doc. I mean, sir. Wayman, what are you doing in here? You're supposed to be downstairs. Yeah, yeah, I know. But as long as I may win 60 bucks, I took the chance. 60 bucks? Oh. Well, everybody around the hospital is saying that if Dr. Conlon finds out that you're a doctor... Huh? You, you follow me, Dr. Kilday? I guess so. Eh? Yeah, well, they're betting if he finds out, then Dr. Conlon will use that there, the, the, the machine to electrocute Dr. Gillespie. By the great horn spoon. I'm betting he won't. Oh, well, anyway, it proves your loyalty to Dr. Gillespie. Oh, uh, loyalty's got nothing to do with it. I'm getting three to one odds. Just sit back now and relax, Mr. Gillis. Let the healing, life-giving alpha protonic miracle rays flow through your autonomic nervous system. Yes, indeed. And 50 bucks a flow. Ah, but the reward, Mr. Gillis. Freedom from sickness. Mm. Abundance of energy. A 100% joy in living. What do a few pennies matter? Oh, you're absolutely indeed. right, Dr. Conlon. Money isn't everything. But uh, are you entirely certain there's no danger in this treatment? Yeah, I'd hate to have my autonomic nervous system blow out of you. Well, there's not a thing to worry about, gentlemen. Huh. Everything is compensated, and I computed the setting very carefully. You see, right now, the machine is removing the inductive microfarad excess from the heart and distributing it between the thyroid and the left kidney. I see. That's why it's so important to make accurate computations. We don't dare remove too many microfarads from the heart or add too many to the kidney. Well, we certainly don't. Might start a chain reaction, I'd just up and disintegrate. Well, I, I hardly think that could happen. Hmm. But it would cause trouble. Well, the five minutes are up. That's the first treatment. Fifty bucks for five minutes. What a racket. I beg your pardon, sir? Oh, you'll get used to father's little jokes, Dr. Conner. Uh, by the way, did you make out that diagnostic report I phoned about this morning? Why, yes, I did. It's um, right here on the table. I really don't see the importance of it, though. It's the cure that counts. Well, father has his eccentricities, you know. Yeah, here you are. Well, thanks. Did you sign, Jimmy? Diagnosis, angina pectoris, and myocardial deterioration. Yes, it's signed, Dr. Gillespie. Dr. Gillespie? That's right. And I'm Dr. Kildare. We're both on staff with Blair Hospital. What's the meaning of this? And as far as you're concerned, it means you're through swindling people out of their lives and money with that phony hookup of vacuum tubes and condensers. You can't prove anything. You're bluffing. You think so? As you may know, Dr. Gillespie is one of the leading internists in this country. Before we came here yesterday, he was examined by two other top men and myself and pronounced physically fit, including his heart. So what? Uh, you doctors make mistakes all the time with your medieval methods of diagnosis. We'll let the public decide how medieval they are. Tomorrow morning, three of the city's biggest newspapers will carry a full-page feature with photostats of the diagnostic reports, including yours, cardiograms, x-rays, along with our story of the way you operate. I'll sue you. I'll sue both of you and Blair Hospital for a million dollars. I don't think so, Mr. Conlon. There's no law against a man making an honest living. Honest living. 
Come on, Dr. Gillespie. I'm getting a little sick. All right, Jimmy. All right. See you in jail, Conlon. Oh, no, you won't. I'll beat it. Wait and see. Uh, Oh, by the way, Mr. Conlon, I feel it's my duty to warn you that you're a very sick man. What are you talking about? That spot on your hand. It's a sarcoma. What? You'd better get the best medical attention you can find and as soon as possible. You're crazy. You're lying. Think what you like. You've been told. Goodbye. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Gentlemen, I hope you're exercising due discretion in this matter. Discretion, Guru? We've thrown it to the winds. Stop, Sir Gillespie. We're referring to Conlon as a charlatan and a mountebank. Oh, no. Yep, yep. A liar, a swindler, a blackguard, and a crook. Oh, good heavens. Our legal department specifically cautioned against vilification or terms of opprobrium. Don't worry, Dr. Crew. There'll be nothing in the story but facts, and facts that can be proved. He won't get anywhere if he does file a libel suit. Please. I shudder to contemplate even the possibility of his filing a suit. Why, at the very thought of coming face to face with that creature, I... 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 You blanch. Well, I certainly quell. Hmm. After all, I... Oh, hi, Diana. Dr. Kildare, Dr. Conlon is here to see you. Did you say... Conlon? Yes, Dr. Guru. Oh. Tell Conlon to come in, Miss Vernon. And then find some smelling salts for Carew. The alpha potential of his pancreas has short-circuited across his pituitary. Uh, well, gentlemen, now that you've made a complete examination, are you still of the same opinion? It's still the same diagnosis? Oh, no question about it, Conlon. It's a sarcoma. Well, am I right in assuming it can be cured by an operation? Surgery's out of my line. That's Kildare's field. Yes, it can be removed by surgery, Mr. Conlon. It's not a simple operation, but done at this time. Prognosis is very favorable. Dr. Kildare, would you be willing to perform this operation in spite of your personal feelings? I'm a doctor, and as such, I have very clear-cut responsibilities toward my patients. Under the circumstances you mentioned, you'd be a patient. It's as simple as that. Personal feelings are out of it. How much would it cost? I'm on staff here. You'll have to discuss cost with the business office. However, uh, Dr. Gillespie and I have a price of our own that you'll have to meet. What do you mean? I'll operate in return for your signing a complete detailed confession of your swindling activities. You must think I'm crazy. Why, with something like that, they could probably send me up. All right, Conlon. Then I suggest you find another physician. The newspaper article will still be effective even without the confession. I've already been to two other doctors today. Neither one of them would operate. They both told me to come to you. I can have a stenographer sent up from the office if if you'd care to dictate it, Mr. Conlon. All right. I know when I'm beat. I'll have it for you later this afternoon. Good. At least I'll have my life. Which is more than Mrs. Brady will. Hmm. Check into the hospital at 9 o'clock in the morning. All right, thanks. Goodbye, gentlemen. Well, Jimmy, I guess that does it. Yes, at least it's about all we can do. From here on, it's up to the authorities. And the public, and the public. They're the real judge and jury. I think I can predict their verdict in this case. It's just too bad we can't smoke all the Conlins out into the open. Oh, well, you fight it where you find it, and that's the best you can do. And it's enough, Jimmy, it's enough. No matter how you look at it, life is pretty much a matter of struggling and fighting. And it will be so for a long time to come. That smooth, easy road to joyous living is still a figment of an electro-redonic dream. Come on, let's go to lunch. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare.
And now, once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, Jimmy, getting married or, or going to a funeral? Neither. As a matter of fact, we've got a date with Diana. I hope. She been here yet? Nope. What's the idea? To impress her with your dazzling attire? Gorgeous raiment? Oh, not exactly, but it does feel good to change from a white coat to a black tie once in a while, as long as it's not too often. Where are you going? Supper at the Starlight Room. Again, I hope. Now, she wasn't put out with you in the first place. I know women. Cynic. Good evening, Dr. Gillespie. Jimmy. Mmm, nice. You like it? Mm Mm-hmm. Love it? Ah, me. If I were only 20 years younger, but that's life. Well, I'm going to bed. You're going out. <laughs> Have a good time. We will. Good night. Uh, look, sweetie, I'm awfully sorry about last night, but we got involved in that newspaper story, and... Well, I'm just sorry, that's all. Jimmy, you're a born crusader, and you'll never change. Incurable, huh? I'm afraid so. And you know something? What? I wouldn't want you to change. <laughs> all right, sweetie, then I'll make a confession. What, Jimmy? I couldn't change. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Ted Osborne, Georgia Ellis, Ed Max, Sarah Selby, and Raymond Burr. Dick Joy speaking. Thank you.